In this lecture, we'll learn about the modal component. Modals are flexible dialog prompts, and they come with different options for functionality and styling. Modals can be triggered by links and buttons. First, we'll create one of each, but without any related modals. To use a link, we'll first create an anchor tag with an href attribute with an empty value. We'll give it the classes BGN and BGN primary to make it look like a button. Then we need to add a data toggle attribute with the value modal and a data target attribute with the value being empty for now. To use a button instead, we simply need to change the anchor tag to a button tag, remove the href attribute and add the type button. Now let's create the modal itself. We'll create a container div with the classes modal and fade and the id modal. For accessibility, we'll also add the tab index attribute with the value minus one, the role attribute with the value dialog, the area labeled by attribute with the value modal title, we'll use that value again, and the area hidden attribute with the value true. Inside this div, we'll create another div with the class modal dialog and the role attribute with the value document. Inside this div, we'll create yet another div with the class modal content. We are now ready to create our actual content. First, we have our modal header. Then we have our modal body. And finally, we have our modal footer. Inside our modal header, we'll create a heading element. With the class modal title and the ID modal title, which is referring to our area labeled by attribute from before. We'll give our heading the text modal title. We'll now create a close icon for the modal header. This is done by first creating a button tag with the type button, the class close, the data dismiss attribute with the value modal, and the area label attribute with the value close. Inside the button tag, we'll create the close icon graphic, which is the HTML entity for the time symbol. To hide the icon graphic for screen readers, we'll wrap it in a span tag with an area hidden attribute with the value true. For our modal body, we'll just create a paragraph with some lorem ipsum text. The user action happens in our modal footer. Here we'll create two buttons, one for doing an action and one for closing. The action button is made by creating a button tag with the type button and the classes BGN and BGN primary. The close button is made by creating a button tag with the type button, the classes BGN and BGN secondary, and the data dismiss attribute with the value modal. Now we just need to change the value of the data target attribute in the trigger button to modal. Now let's see this in action in the browser. When we click our button the modal will appear. It can be dismissed in four ways by clicking the close button, by clicking the close icon, by clicking outside the modal and by pressing the escape key. If a modal have lots of content, it will become scrollable. 
To demonstrate this, we will create four more paragraphs with some lorem ipsum text. Let's see this in the browser. When we open the motor, we can now scroll the content. Let's delete the additional paragraphs again. We can easily change the size of the motor. To make the motor smaller, we add the class modal sm to the modal dialog container. Let's see it in the browser. To make the modal larger, we use the class modal lg instead. Let's see it in the browser. We'll remove the sizing class again. We can remove the fade animation of our model by removing the fade class from our model container. Now, when we look at it in the browser, the model will appear without any animation. We can also remove the backdrop functionality of our model so that it won't close when clicking outside of the model. To do this, we add the data backdrop attribute with the value static to our trigger button. As we can see now, Nothing happens when we click outside of our model. We'll remove our attribute again. In a similar way, we can remove the escape key functionality. To do this, we add the data keyboard attribute with the value false to our trigger button. As we can see, now, nothing happens when we press the escape key. We have now learned how to create a modal component and change its functionality and styling. Go on and continue with the coding exercise, which will help you learn the correct structure for this component. In the next lecture, we'll learn about the nav component.